Formatting is key to making any article stand out. Buckle up, because we're going to go over how you can dress up your World Anvil articles to wow everyone at the ball. First, we need to understand what our goals are. There are two key things we want, readability and visual appeal. Readability is simple. Can we read it easily? A big wall of text may have all the information you need, but it can strain the eyes after a while, or readers may lose their place if they dare blink or look away. Readability accounts for this and acts as an umbrella over things like breaks, emphasizing important information, tooltips, bold, underline, italics, links, and more. Visual appeal is simpler. Does it look pretty? Going back to the wall of text, sure, it has everything you need and it's easy to make. It's the utilitarian option. However, it ain't pretty to look at. It's the concrete wall of formatting. That, and it doesn't flow very well. You want the eyes of your readers to dance across the page from section to section, gracefully leaping through your most important information before twirling over your filler. A graceful flow. Your articles should be a dance between you and your reader, rather than a concrete wall you throw them at. Other things to note here are the placement of images, how much white space you use, quotes, containers, your sidebar, and more. To show you how to raise your articles into a higher plane of existence, I've written an example article here that showcases several techniques and will show you the before and after the formatting. To do this, I'll be using the legacy editor, but you can use all these techniques in your editor of choice. In the default editor, Plato, you can click on the source button in the top right corner to write these tags without issue. I've gone simple here and just use a generic template, though these tricks will still apply to any template you choose. We're going to take a big wall of text and mold that into something that exemplifies both readability and visual appeal. To save some time here, I didn't write an entire article and instead used my own filler text. Now, let's view this word baby and see how it jives. Not at all. I can't find my way through it. None of it stands out and it flows about as well as river bricks. It simply won't do. Ask yourself, what is the most important information here? Generally, it needs to stand out, and that's where headers come in. But before we even touch headers, there's something even more important, a summary. The very top of your article should let readers know what it's about. You don't need more than a few sentences, but it goes a long way. A quote here can also hook readers in very well. I made this bit here my summary and simply set it apart with a line break. Then, I made a header for the following section. Header 1 was simple enough. For BB code tags, you can either click the buttons along the top or type them yourself. Either way, they come out the same way. Two tags made of two square brackets, some text to denote the tag inside, and a forward slash at the beginning of the second tag to close it. Of note, if you use the buttons to place your tags, you can highlight text and then click the button to wrap the BB code tags around it. Each section of your article should fall under a header, separating groups of information so that everything becomes easier to read and digest. Alone, this comes out as a bit of a wall of text, however, and to make this flow better, we can do a number of things. In this case, I added an image. To do so, simply go to Images and Files on the side menu here. Find one you want, and click the green button here to copy its BB code tag. Then you can take it back and paste it where you want it. However, this is too large. To change an image's size, you can go to its BB code tag and add in a pipe symbol, followed by either left, right, or center, which will respectively make the image float on the left, right, or center of where it's been placed. I tend to go with left, so I've used that here. It's important to note that you must add this before you can change its size. Following this, we can add a second pipe to set the image's width. I find that 280 tends to work well for square images, but you may find another works best for your particular image and context. As you can see, this makes our paragraph here much easier on the eyes. Add in a line break or two and we're golden. One thing to note about line breaks are widows, tiny fragments and sentences that hang on their own lines. These are disorienting and disrupt the flow of your article. Sometimes you may need to add or remove text in order to remove widows. Planning your line breaks ahead of time to avoid them can also go a long way. 
If I was talking about, say, history in this section, but on any of the following sections, I may want to talk about a specific period of history that doesn't really warrant its own big header. For that, we have smaller headers, H2, H3, and H4, each generally growing smaller or less attention grabby as you progress. I've used an H2 here as that denotes this section is a subsection of the first. Histories often have many periods, and so I may wish to talk about another one here, which I could put under another H2 section beneath this one, or I could do something else that tends to look much better. Place both side by side in columns. To create a column, you must first use a row tag to make sure other column elements, which includes pretty much everything else on the page, don't think they need to stand beside ours. Don't forget the closing row tag either. Next, we go inside these row tags and add to col or column tags. I'd highly recommend keeping tags like these on their own lines so you can quickly and easily find them later. Now when we view our article again, we can see that each of these sections is next to one another and it looks quite nice. You want to use more line breaks in these columns to give your readers rest, as sentences take up more height on the screen within them. Perhaps you want to show a much larger image instead of a small one, such as a map, portrait, landscape, or whatever you may have. This is thankfully quite easy. Simply copy and paste the image block as before, but without typing anything into it. Here I've placed a large image. It stands here on its own and keeps things interesting. However, you may want to take this same large image and use it elsewhere but smaller. Same as before, use the pipe symbol, a direction left, center, or right, followed by another pipe and the maximum desired width. Another tool I'd highly recommend using to keep your articles visually interesting are quotes. Quotes are a great way to add in flavor as well. To add a quote, simply open it with a quote tag, write your quote, and close it with a closing quote tag. You can also attribute your quotes. To do this, add a pipe at the end of the quote's text, and then type in whoever the quote came from. As you can see here, this adds something for readers to latch onto. It's a powerful tool. Use it well. Now you've got a lovely looking article, but there's a problem. A dark, terrifying beast hiding in the corner. That empty space on the side. Visually, this space is confusing and can disrupt the flow of the rest of your article, as the stark contrast between content and no content can draw the eye away from what's important. Simply put, you want to fill your sidebar. What goes in the sidebar? Generally, side information. If you're writing about a city, you could write about landmarks, specific locals, laws, etc. The sidebar can be a great way to draw out new and interesting ideas you wouldn't have had otherwise. Or you could put in existing sections into the sidebar. Once you have the information you want, you need to figure out where to put it. The sidebar is split into four main sections. The top, which rests above the colored panel. The content panel top, the top half of that panel. The content panel bottom, which is the bottom half of that panel. And the bottom, which is beneath the panel. If you fill out or choose options in the prompt boxes of your template, some of that info may already be here in the content panel top section. Keep this in mind when you want to add in new things, that info will always be there. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter which sections you fill, just make sure that something goes into the content panel as it will not go away. A lot of the same tips apply to the sidebar. Use headers to separate info, Line breaks keep things easy on the eyes, add in quotes for some spice, etc. However, you may want to use more line breaks here, as with a small space, text gets dizzying a lot faster. A general rule of thumb that I like to go by is to add in a line break every one to two sentences within the sidebar. Widows are especially difficult to squash here, so take your time when formatting. If you cannot come up with much more to fill up your sidebar, quotes, again, go a long way. Images can be thrown in too, but there is a practical thing you can add in as well. A related articles section. I like to add this in the very bottom of the sidebar. Give it a small header and pop in article blocks of related articles. To grab article blocks, you can go to your articles and categories page, find the article you need, click on it, and hit this button. Paste it back in the sidebar and you're good to go. Now you're armed with the knowledge you need to create beautiful, readable articles. Go forth and...
Hello? Hey, who's there? No, you can't be here. Sir, you not- Oh, oh god, no, put- put down the- 